In this video, we'll look at a compounding interest example with multiple steps, and we'll solve it with BA2 Plus Financial Calculator. A company took a loan of $200,000 from a Canadian bank. It repaid $50,000 in one year, $100,000 in two years, and the balance in three years. The bank charged an interest rate of 6% compounded monthly for the first year, 5% compounded monthly for the second year, and 5.5% compounded monthly for the third year. The question is, what should the final payment be? Let's draw a timeline for this problem. The company took out a loan of 200000 and repaid 50000 and 100000 at the end of the first and second year. We're looking for the last payment amount that's due at the end of the third year. The interest rates are different for each year. There are multiple ways to solve this problem. We'll only discuss one of them. With the principal and interest rate changes during the three-year period, we need to consider three time segments, year one, two, and three. As a result, we'll have three steps of calculations. Step one, we'll calculate the future value at the end of the first year. At the time, a repayment of 50,000 was made. Therefore, future value takes away 50,000, becomes the new balance and also the present value for the next step. Looking at the second time segment, we'll calculate the future value, which is the balance at the end of the second year. A repayment of 100,000 was made at this time. The future value takes away 100,000, becomes the new balance, and also the present value for the next step. Step three. We'll calculate the future value, which is the balance at the end of the third year, in order to settle the loan at this time. The final payment must be the same amount as this balance. Let's look at the calculation steps. There are seven variables involved when we use the financial calculator. PY, CY, N, IY, PV, PMT, and FB. In the first step, interest rate is 6% compounded monthly. IY is 6, CY is 12. Present value is 200,000. Let's make PV negative here. Since PV and FB are always in opposite signs, we will be expecting a positive FV. PMT refers to periodic payments. There's no periodic amount involved here, therefore PMT is zero. Since PMT is zero, PY, which represents number of payments per year, will take the same value as CY, which is 12. N is the total number of compounding periods. The term is one year, compounding 12 times a year. N is one times 12 equals to 12. Let's calculate the future value with the financial calculator. Turn on the calculator. Second on the PY. PY is 12. 12, enter. Scroll down. CY is also 12. Second and quit to exit this mode. 12 for N. 6 for IY negative 200,000 for PV, zero for PMT, compute future value. We get 212335.5624. We will keep all the decimals in this middle step. The future value takes away 50,000, gives us the present value in the step 2. Which is 
335.5624. In step 2, interest rate becomes 5% compounded monthly. IY is 5, CY is 12. PMT is still 0, therefore PY is the same as CY is 12. N is 12 for this time period. On the calculator, we don't need to enter all the values this time, since the calculator stored the entries from previous step. We will only enter the values that have changed. We'll enter PV and then IY. 5 is for IY. Compute future value. It is 170640.9578. Take away 100,000 from this amount. We get 7064.9578. This is the present value for the third step. In step 3, we have IY is 5.5, CY is 12, PMT is still 0, PY is the same as CY, 12, N is 12, enter the new PV and IY, 5.5 is for IY. Compute future value. We will round it to two decimals. Therefore, 74625.66 is the balance at the end of the third year and is also the last payment amount. That solved the problem. Thank you for watching.